All right, Mike Claudio from Winrate Consulting. Thank you so much for being with us. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, man. So Mike Claudio, uh, owner, founder of Winrate Consulting, host of the Big Stud Podcast, and founder of a Champion Shoes nonprofit. We do uh, our for-profit business focuses on one-on-one -on -one strategic and tactical coaching for contractors. Very cool. Well, look, we have a whole bunch of, of folks in our customer base and beyond who are super hungry for the kind of things that you, you do every single day. So before we get into the substance, maybe tell us a little bit about your origin story. How did you end up doing what you do today? Yeah. So the short story, which we could probably take days to actually tell the whole story, but the short story is I started my, my career in corporate America. I did that for a little over nine years in retail, retail sales management, B2B sales and management, and primarily for the second half of my career focused on selling to the construction industry. Um, kind of got burnt out on the corporate structure and middle management and that kind of stuff and transitioned into entrepreneurial small business world. I uh, I took over as vice president of business development, quote unquote, for a small remodeling company, helped them grow pretty substantially, then moved on to a multi-million dollar roofing company in a similar position, you know, kind of a sales coach um, and salesperson, kind of a coach player role. I had a team of salespeople. I had my own pipeline took over sales and marketing for that company, grew that company pretty substantially. And over the course of that five to six years in the space, people just started asking me a lot of questions. How are you doing this? How are you solving that? What are you doing about this? And I realized not only am I, do I really love helping people, I actually learned a lot, you know, going through those five <laughs> or six years of growth and support and problem solving. And in 2017, I, I just started helping people um, recognized I was good at it, recognized I was getting results. And I was like, I need to monetize this. Like we're yeah. like most people's, you know, entrepreneurial origin story comes from is like, I'm doing something I like. I should probably make money doing this. There's got to be money in the banana stand. <laughs> and I was bringing value to people, right? So yeah. recognize that not only am I good at it, but I'm getting results. Like I enjoyed it. I'm good at communicating, but I'm getting results with people. Yeah. And so beginning of 2018, I started the LLC and um, kind of we, we, one of our core values is operate with a help first mentality. And, you know, I just basically started helping people and one client led to the next and one yeah. price point led to the next. And, you know, we went from in 2019, we did like $130,000 in revenue to, you know, this year we're on pace for 3.5 million. And we have almost a hundred active one-on-one -on -one clients right now. We got, you know, 14 or 15 employees, you know, five or six Incredible. coaches on staff and, you know, so the origin is I learned how to do it. And like all of our coaches, either currently or previously have run multi-million dollar construction companies. And I, we really focus on, you know, from my experience and my journey was coaching from experience, yeah, not concept and theory. And I'm not knocking people out there. I think there's a season. I think there's a time. I think there's problem sets for every type of consultant or coach that's out there. Yeah. But for me, I think, you know, having somebody who's lived the trenches, who's lived the problem sets, who's lived the issues that our client base is experiencing personally. And like, I wouldn't say it's a rule, but it's something we talk about as a coaching staff in our, you know, internal meetings is I want you to, when someone has a problem to say, this is what I did when I dealt with that, or this is yeah. what I would have done if I dealt with that, not this is what you should do. And it's a really big part of how we coach and communicate to our client base around this is what we would do, or this is what we did do when we were at that fork in the road. Here's yeah. the things we analyze. Here's why we went right instead of left. And then we work with our clients to collaborate on the best action plan, not, you know, here's a system, here's a process, here's the best way to do anything. I, I, bullshit. There isn't a best way to do anything. And there's the right thing for that person based on their employee base, based on their desired outcome, based on the vision they have for their company, based on how they want to be as a parent or present as a yeah. husband or wife, right? There is no same thing that's going to work for everybody. And we try to collaborate with our clients based on their desired outcome and what the best course of action is to make that all come together. I love it. Look, I mean, I heard like servant leadership. I heard, you know, leading by practitioners. Um, I mean, these are all the things that allow you to get the context of like when you give a piece of advice, you actually can know a little bit about like the, the background, and the nuance in which it sits rather mm -hmm. than, you know, in theory, chapter four would tell me this is the right framework to to impose right now. That's a really I mean, that's 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 what that's what it's, it's made out of. It's amazing. So thinking yeah. about impact, um, you know, tell me, you know, if I were to give you a blank board and, and say you, you can now talk to, to every single construction business in America, what are two or three things you, you'd want them all to know to give them a head start as they scale their business? 
I mean, I think the one of the bigger things I see struggling is there just isn't a process to formalize evolution, right? Like you're going to have to change. Like you're yeah. going to have to evolve. Everything's going to feel like it's going great today. And tomorrow, two people are going to quit. One customer is going to send us a lawsuit. This thing, like in understanding and having a process to evolve with market conditions, marketing, like results, employee headcount, different people on the team, different services you want to offer. And so having a way to develop quarterly initiatives, having a way to hold people accountable to those, even just tracking them. Like, I mean, how many times do you yeah. hear companies talk about, well, we talked about doing this, and then we just like never talked about it again. Right. Yep. Totally. It sounds basic. <laughs> it sounds like, yeah, Mike, but like, what's the real answer, right? That's it. Like, if you have a, a strategy inside of your company, on, on inside of your company, on a quarterly basis to realign your activities towards a desired outcome, which was, so the second answer to your question is, yeah, understand the vision. What are you working towards? Most people are just like, how do I make money today? That yep. works when you're doing five hundred thousand dollars a year. That doesn't work at two point five million. Like at that point, you have to start thinking more strategically and making decisions because of the size of the ship is so much bigger. You can't pivot like you're on a jet ski anymore. So today's yeah. problems, today's solutions. You have to start looking ahead at how you're going to avoid major obstacles that are coming, like investments in equipment, like headcount, like like capacity concerns for your production team or sales concerns for your sales team. Those things need to like have solutions that are based towards a future desire. So if you have a way to course correct on a regular basis inside your company and, and have initiatives that actually get done and you understand what you're actually trying to build in the future, not just, well, what do you want? I want 10 million. That's not an answer. Like it's it, you need to understand why you understand what it looks like. And maybe that is the answer for some people, but most people just think more money is the answer. And if you build more money with broken processes, you lose money yeah. at a faster pace too. And if you don't have a like scaled success, also bring scaled problems. Yep. Right. And if, if you're bleeding, <laughs> if you're bleeding 5% on every project right now, that doesn't matter as much if your average project size is 10,000. It matters a lot more when your average project size is 100,000. When you have so many more projects going on, it's hard to see it. You don't, you don't it see is. it as obvious when your first three projects where you have 30, um, you know, things that are leaking there. So, so maybe underneath this, right. So um, you know, un underneath a solid growing business, what are the, the financial considerations you've got to put in place as you you lock down your vision, you kind of know where you're going. How do you actually get the numbers and the money to kind of support, you know, delivering on that vision? I mean, so I'll be full transparency. Like I'm definitely not what I would consider like a financial expert. Okay. That's one of the, I would say like, that's maybe one of the I have skill sets and like, that's not one of them. But some yeah. things I've learned even building my own business to multiple yeah. million dollars is having a really strong understanding of cash flow. And what I mean by yeah. cash flow, like it's, I, I feel like it's utilized almost as a trigger word now. It's like this, <laughs> I love you. It's like, it's overused, right? But truly understanding what's happening to your bank account balance over the next 30, 60 and 90 days. Yeah. Like, when am I going to actually run out of money if I don't sell something? And if you have that understanding of like when money's coming in, when money's going out, you have a better understanding of when to actually pay bills, when to pay down debt, when yeah. to make investments in hires. Because people say, well, there's money in the account. Let me go, let me pay off that credit card. Let me pay off that vendor. Forgetting there were three checks in the mail that you forgot was that was actually <laughs> sent already. And now there's no plan. It all comes out in the same day. And you can go from a hundred grand to negative five grand in your account overnight. Yeah. If you're not planning for like, not just when is money coming in, when is money going out? When should we be investing in growth or new equipment or vehicles or personnel? And then the second one I would say is more granular is you should know what your gross profit is on every single project you do. Yeah, It's one of the harder things, uh, depending on the complexity of your ecosystem. You know, if you're a shower glass door company, a little bit easier to track expenses than if you're a full-blown remodeling company right? A lot more moving parts. But if you, you have to be able to understand what is our job costing per project and what is our overhead run rate? What is our overhead burn? You know, I was doing yeah. this this morning, helping somebody calculate, like, what does it cost you to run your business every day? So how much revenue do you need to generate every day? Not just revenue, but profit. Well, if you can't tell me how much revenue you need, if you can't tell me what your profit margins are. <laughs> so, it sounds so simple, right? But I think there's so many people, it's just so cloudy. It's it's almost like the numbers bleed in front of you. Well, it, it bleeds in front of you, but I think what really is the problem is, is because most people are uncomfortable by money, they don't want to talk yeah. about it, they don't want to look at it. 
They don't want to hold their team accountable to tracking expenses. The minute someone like, I don't want to track that. And the owner is like, well, I don't want to track it either. So uh, like, it becomes this like, it, it's <laughs> difficult to implement new strategies because your team's going to push back. People don't want to track receipts. They don't want to send pictures. They don't want to be in that level detail. But yeah. if you don't, you're putting every bit of financial liability you've put into this business into the hands of a broken process. Yeah. And employees that are not bought into helping you maintain success. And that's where I think some people fail. They, instead of pushing back and making the, the employee fit the process, yeah, they adjust the process to fit what the employees are willing to do. Yeah, And then you get either partial, broken, incomplete, or inaccurate information, but then you're making decisions on your business as if you have accurate information. Correct. And that's like one of the biggest mistakes I think I see from that is, is, you know, the cash flow is important. What's coming in, what's going out, but really understanding, are we profitable on these projects? Are we profitable enough to cover the overhead? Because yeah. what also like struggles, like what I think with scaling companies is you can't charge the same per unit no matter what you sell, when it's you and one truck and a guy went to when you have an office and a receptionist and, uh, and APAR people, a controller, yeah. four trucks, five people here, six people there. Like you can't, it's almost impossible to charge the exact same as overhead adjust, but people don't yeah. analyze that. And they're and, like, you know, funny. where's all the money? Well, you don't have any left over. You're spending it all. It's funny. There's a, there's this theme that I'm hearing from you, which is it's almost like discipline, the discipline to take that step back, to think about the vision, the discipline to take that step back, to think about how am I going to run the process, not letting the soldiers run the army, but saying this is how we need to act to survive. Um, that's that's such a an anchor in what you're saying here. Um, you know, let's talk about maybe you know you have a leader who's trying to put these in place. Talk about communication skills. Um, how do you help construction professionals enhance their communication skills, both especially within their teams? Like you were saying, sometimes it's so hard to articulate these things to your team and also with clients. I mean, that's a really broad question, obviously. Yeah. You know, but I, I think one of the biggest myths is if I didn't narrow it down to a single, we'll say best practice, is I think so many business owners forget about explaining the the why behind the what. They right. give the what I need you to do this. I need this receipt, bro. Where's the receipt, man. But it's like the why behind it is almost more important, almost always more important than the what, yeah. because employees don't have the perspective you have from the top down. And when you ask them to do something, if you don't tell them why they make their own interpretation as to why things are happening. And 100% yeah. of the time, it's not going to be a positive. They think you have their best interest at heart decision. Same thing with customers. You know, yeah. why is certain things happening? Not just what, but why are certain parts of the process there that might create a perceived inconvenience? Why do you charge a design fee, right? A lot of people, I'm a huge proponent of charging design fees for contractors. Mm -hmm. Estimate fees, design fees, walkthrough fees. Like, it's. It, I think it's one of the best ways to, to protect your limited amount of time on the best opportunities possible. And so if you say, hey, we charge $2,500 estimate fee, or we charge a $5,000 discovery fee, or we charge yeah. a $10,000 design fee, here's why. Well, you may not understand what goes into that. My team's going to spend 50 to 60 hours over the next two weeks designing, reaching out to every sub, reaching out to every supplier to get accurate pricing so that you know you're walking into a project that will not have financial surprises. Mm -hmm. That's the why. That's that, that, if you just say, hey, it's 10 grand to do a, to do a design fee, they're like, bro, you're going to put some drawings together. Why is it $10,000, yeah. right? Yeah. They, they can't connect the dots just as much as an employee. When you ask them to do something, the what is important. Most people struggle with even articulating the what in enough detail to get it done correctly or document an SOP so they can be done repetitively. Yeah. But I think from a communication perspective, the why something needs to be done. But this goes even into as an owner. If you can't articulate a why behind a what, that what may not be as important as you think it is. That's a great, that's a great test. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you can't tell me why you're doing something, it may not be as important or valuable as you think it is. And so as an owner, if you're implementing new strategies or making changes or adjusting things, sometimes I see business owners operate so much out of emotion. They just decided it feels like we should be doing this, but I don't know why it feels that way. Then you shouldn't do that. 
and and I think that 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 and to your point, that test or that collaboration on you know, it, sometimes it's with your team too. You know, when they say, "Well, boss, we want to do it this way," no, we don't do it that way because it goes both directions. Yeah. So when I'm training somebody's team, when they're like, "Hey, man, I think we should do this differently," if you go to somebody who built it to the best of their ability, it's their baby. They've been doing it that way for years, and you come in and like, "Bro, this is the terrible way to do this. We should do it this way." You're gonna rub them the you're gonna rub the, the business owner the wrong way, and you're unlikely yeah. to get the desired outcome. If you come in and say, "Hey, man, based on these initiatives or these goals you've set, this part of the process is not as efficient. I think we should make this change." Because we will get this outcome, which helps yeah. this go better. Oh man, I didn't know that that was happening. Now that's a great that's a, that's a great why behind the what example. It's it's also especially hard. We've talked to a few folks recently who bought their business, right? Yep. So there's already oh, yeah. a car that's rolling, and there's so many of these. Well, we've always done it this way, and then you know the new owner coming in and trying to you know, wrap their head around. And in one way, the easiest thing is say, oh okay, like guess we'll just continue. But I think in many ways. It's also the best opportunity to say, let's like, if no one here can tell me why this is happening, maybe we shouldn't. Uh, no, and, and like, I do that a lot of times too, because, you know, I get the benefit of asking the stupid questions sometimes. So someone says, well, this is, this is why we invoice, or this, we invoice this way. I'll say, why? I, I really don't know. Well, do you think it's the best? I really don't know. Well, then let's dig into that. Right. Yeah. And I think it, it just, it really helps a lot of people understand the emotional context and the, the subjective perspective behind different things that are happening in and out of a business. Wow. Okay. I mean, that That's a deep cut. I like that. <laughs> um, look, so Mike, just, you know, last couple of thoughts, you know, what's your favorite tool or service you're, you're using, you're seeing people use right now and why? What's getting you excited? I mean, I, I'll just attack the, the chat GPT. I don't love it. Uh, I'm I'm concerned it's going to be utilized as a crutch. I see the value in AI. I see the value in programs like ChatGPT because of the speed at which it gives you structure. I think the downside is, so I love it from a, you could type in how to build an SOP for a truck driver on how to clean their vehicle appropriately. And it's going to spit out yeah. a pretty detailed example, right? My concern is it becomes a crutch and it becomes a copy and paste environment and it takes creativity. It takes individualisticness. It takes, that's not even a word, individualized approach. It, it, it takes the, it takes the culture yeah. out. It takes the personality out. It takes everything out and you're starting to see it now. Like you, like I've been interviewed, I interviewed for a, a new salesperson. You can tell who's, who's, whose uh, resume was AI generated and who wasn't, if you understand it. So, as a as a high performing business owner, you yeah. need to understand AI to see how it's being utilized, to even see when it's being utilized on you. If you never use it, you don't know when it's being used against you, because the, the whole the whole concept of like dark AI is incredibly intimidating to me, where you don't know when it's being utilized or not, and so using ChatGPT for structures, for outlines of SOPs, for discussing like performance improvement conversations to like how to's and what to's, but I've seen it be wildly wrong. And yeah. It's a brainstorming partner at best. Right. But you're, what you're saying is like, when you, a, sorry. No, I'll say I, I, I go ahead. Oh, no, saying it's, it's a brainstorming partner, but, but I think yeah. what you're saying, you're seeing people replace it as the actual person thinking copy paste. I got it. Like I'm, I'm set now. And that, I mean, look, it, it's a proxy well, for. You see, you see it happening in marketing a lot. Mm -hmm. You see it happening in marketing a lot, right? And what's going to happen is, is everybody's going to sound the freaking same. Yeah. There's going to be no, no, no culture, no personality that's going to be put into it if it's just copy and paste. And I get it, simple, but simple's. I mean, show me one time where the simplest, easiest option was the best one. Yeah. Well, I mean, everything converges on vanilla, right? At that point, yeah. it's all kind of tasting the same. That's a really, you know, it's funny because there's so much excitement about what you can do with the tools, but I think the, turning the table around, people are using the tools on you. And I think the way you've articulated that, like, you got to know, you got to be able to tease it out because yeah. you don't want, you know, you don't want your folks going to the job site and saying like, you know, what, what's the generic thing you wanted to kind of have that, you know, you hire people for a reason. You hire them yep. because of their individuality. That, that's really, really interesting. Um, look, Mike, this has been just 
So fantastic. Thank you for that. How do people reach you? How do they, how, how can people get in touch? I mean, the easiest way is to go to myclaudio.com. Uh, you got the for-profit, the nonprofit, all of my content links are there. Um, you know, you go, myclaudio.com is the best way to get access to all the things I put out. If you want to go to winrateconsulting.com, that's obviously the website that's built around the coaching and consulting packages and services that we offer. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of all over the place. Just Google it. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll put the details. We'll put the details in the notes. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you.